taking our Bible reading from Psalm 130, verse 5 to 8. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the money. I say my, more than they that watch for the money. Let us dry hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. May the Lord bless his precious words in our hearts in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now the title of our message is Waiting on the Lord. Fantastic. It says we are to wait. But where are we to wait and whom are we to wait on? On the Lord. You know, some people are waiting, you know, when you go to a restaurant, you have waiters. They wait for the customer and they serve the food. And in this case, he said, we are waiting on the Lord. We are to give ourselves unto him and uh, he is commanded us to do so. That we should not wait for the devil, you wait on the Lord. So you can never see shit. For those who wait on the Lord, we renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like the eagle. And so the son he says, I wait for the Lord. In Psalm 130, we read, For I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait. Oh. In who in his word do I hope? I'm not waiting for some dead flesh. I'm not waiting for some uh, superman. I'm not waiting for some great men or women. I'm waiting for this most high God. The word of God is that most high God, the psalmist says. In the seas. He said, my soul waited for the Lord more than the people waiting for money. They say they are going through the night. Everyone's waiting when will it be the money. He says, more than those people who are watching and said, tomorrow money will come. He says, and if truly you have tomorrow money. But that will fail one day. He said, I'm not waiting for that. I'm waiting for the one that will not fail, the constant, the unchangeable, that one day the money will fail. There will be no sun. The world will plunge into darkness, the word of God says. He will seize it. He created the sun in the first place. He said, I'm not waiting for that. I'm not waiting for what the world is waiting for. I'm waiting for the glorious appearing. Of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. That is my hope. I'm waiting for He that came before. Who? Jesus said the Word of God was made flesh. And then the apostle says, We beheld His glory. What wonders. He was doing good. He said, I'm waiting for that one that's going to wipe away my tears. I'm waiting for that one that says that He's coming. Death shall run away. There will be no more death again. He said, that one is the word. The word of God, where do we have the word? In the Bible. Wait. Wait on him. So those people are waiting in flesh, are waiting in vain. And God doesn't want us to do so. That's why the word is preached to us. Jesus said this in Matthew Chapter 24, verse 37 to 39. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, 
marrying and giving marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Says they were not waiting for him. They went about their own business, mindful of their marriage, giving in marriage, drinking, starting new business, doing all sorts of things. No one of them took notice of the word of God that was preached to them. Says until Noah entered into the ark, for so he commanded all of them, not only Noah, he commanded Noah to go and preach, that's all. You see, today God is commanding every one of us to enter this place where God found David. Amen. And that place is the word of God. Say today, if you hear his voice, have thee not your heart, as it was in the days of Noah. Noah was preaching, he said, God says, enter this place. Enter this place. There's not another place you can be saved. Enter this ark. Say, Noah entered, then the Lord shut him in. Jesus says, try to enter in. For I say, many will not enter in. And once the master of the house get up and shut the door, then you come and begin to knock. It's too late. Enter in today. How? By faith. You believe. He said, Noah believed. He has not seen the flood yet. He entered. Don't wait until you see the word of God come to pass. Before you start taking notice, turns out until when the flood came, before they took notice, it was too late. That God is warning us. You know, the devil boasted is coming with the flood. If you check now, the, the market is flooded. And the devil said he's going to pump out flood to carry people away in the faith religion, faith teaching. He boasted. God told us in the Holy Book, in the Bible, so you better be warned. Jesus says, I have foretold you that the devil is going to create confusion in the market. If it was possible, it would deceive the very elite, but the very elite have entered in into the uncorruptible. Says when the enemy comes like a flood, the Lord by his spirit will lift up a standard. All the flood you see today has nothing to do with the Bible. It is of men. Say that God had the woman open the ground, the flood enter in. Now he said to us, this is the place you must enter. Today it's not a physical act. act. There's no physical place. He said that place is the word of God. It's not physical. You believe. You believe on him that he is the Alpha and the Omega. That once you believe, you wait on him. Mm. You wait in faith. And then when the flood comes, then you will not be broken down. The flood is coming. That when the flood comes, it will beat on a house that's built on falsehood. It will fall. Great will be the fall. And so God is saying to us that it, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Holy Bible. God has opened the door. Since Jesus Christ came, he came to open the door. You can enter God today. God can enter you. Who is that God? Jesus says is the Bible. That is so and so and the word. He is on the business of planting the book in you. Now he says, if you are not found in this book, the person is on this journey to hell. You'll be carried away to that where the devil is going. And now so God is saying to you and to me, wait on the Lord. Don't, but don't wait outside. Don't wait in vain. Wait inside. Who is that Christ? Strive to enter in, he said to us, we must enter this place that God commanded. Hear more in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37 to 39. For yet a little while, he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. 
Not only just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to be saving of our soul. We believe. Believe on who? On him. On the word of God. That he is that one that God says he is coming. Tell he told them by Noah that the word of God is coming. He cannot fail. That the end of all flesh is come. You know the end of all flesh has already come. Jesus took your man away. Anyone coming to tell you and preach born again the flesh is a confused fellow. He's preaching inspired word. It's too late now. Jesus took the old man away and gave us this brand new man. Who is this new man? The word. The unstoppable Jesus, whom the grave could not hold on to. Wait on him. He's coming. He said to them, destroy this temple in three days. I'll raise it up. They said, this man is joking. He's a deceiver, but he's not a deceiver. Say so when the tender came, and the word of God came out from the grave. Now, says you should keep your gaze on him. Let him be in you. Don't go and be somewhere else. And Paul says, so that I will be found in him, not, in, not having my own righteousness. If your righteousness is still you, how you, the things you used to do, you don't do them no more, you have not started. Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of religious people, Jesus says you cannot enter. Let it be your righteousness is Christ. That's a good righteousness because there's nothing the devil can do. There's nothing evil in Christ. He did not sin, so there's no accusation against him. And so he says, let this one be your faith. Anyone that draws back from this truth says the God of the Bible says his soul has no pleasure in him or in her. Now, listen to what the eternal spirit said to us in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. He said the whole world will be in pain. On this one they pierced. How did they pierce him? With their tongue. All, all liars. Every lie that has been spoken against the Bible. He said, all those who told lies against the word of God. When the word of God comes to pass, they will be in pain. He said, there is not another. I am God. Jesus says, look at it in verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending, say the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come the almighty now tell me who is who else is coming tell me who else than the god that is speaking to you and me from the holy bible there is not another coming moses said that you didn't see any similitude you had a word coming to you in the mountain he's your god if you don't take to the scriptures he said we will perish out of the way the God of the scriptures said, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending said the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, wait on him. The vision is yet for an appointed time. It will come to pass. Who is going to come to pass? The word. It's not something else. This book, you know what he said concerning him? He said he's going to rule from one end of the earth to another. That the Bible will take over. That is the message. And you see, the world don't believe that. That heaven and earth will pass away. The word of God will not pass away. That's why he said we should repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He is God. There's not another God. Say the days of Noah, they did not believe that the word of God is God whom Noah was preaching. Noah entered by faith, the rest did not enter. Please enter by faith. Nothing else is coming than the Bible is coming, say the Holy Spirit. He said he's going to overrun the world. They will know. 
that he is the Alpha and Omega. If they like, let them gang up. If they like, let them sit and say, we are going to remove the Bible. They say he's unremovable. He is the Lord. If you, if you remove him from the pulpit in the churches, they have done so. Says he's the wicked one doing so. We are not to remove the word of God from the pulpit. We are not to remove him from school. We are not to remove the word of God. He is the Lord of all. Everyone is to know him no, with no exception. But he said they will know him not in a covenant way. That's why there will be pain. You know they knew him in the days of Noah. But he said it was too late for them. Now as we begin to round up now, listen to what he said to us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2 to 3. For unto us was this gospel preached as well as unto them. For the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Then the same Bible that's been preached to us in Bible Revelation ministry was preached before. There's not another gospel you will preach. But the people that had it in the past, it didn't profit them. The only reason is because they didn't believe that he is the Lord. He is the one that is. He is the one that was and is to come. Verse 3, for we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my rock, if they shall if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, enter him. Let him enter you. How? As that dwelling place of God. That God dwell in Christ. That the whole fullness of God dwells in the Bible. Period. All God is saying to you and me is to believe. You don't need to do anything else. It is the Holy Spirit that preaching. It's the Holy Spirit that came to reveal to us that the Bible is the Son of God. That the Son of God is not an imagination. The Son of God whom we preach is not going to jump out from space. No, it is this book, the Holy Bible. Whom we preach. But he says there are faith that is preaching men, preaching grass, that the flesh is grass. All their glory is the flower of the grass. For the word of God liveth and abideth forever. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be the days when the Bible is preached. In all generations, until he come to pass, and what God says concerning him, he's coming. And read, let's hear the final word from Second Timothy, chapter four, verse two to three. Preach the word. That's it. The apostle Paul told Timothy, "Preach the word." The instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. God is patient. He's patient. He don't want anyone to perish. Say, then preach the word. So he commanded us. If they hear you, good. If they don't hear, it will be a weakness against them. Preach the word. Preach the Bible. If they like, let them preach that dream. He told Jeremiah. But you, Jeremiah, be faithful. He that have my word, preach the Bible. Preaching that this is where he wants everybody to enter. Whether you are from Japan, enter the Bible by faith. Whether you are from America, enter the Bible by faith. Whether you are in Africa, enter the word of God by faith. He is the dwelling place of God. So that you'll be found in him, he will account for you. Anyone who found in this place, God knows you can't deceive God. For the time is coming, verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall they heed to themselves, teachers having itching ears, talking fable. They say they are preaching gospel. Is that man the gospel of God? 
Is, is prosperity the gospel of God? You don't know God again? The word of God is God. It is written. Your prosperity, if you like, then the whole word Jesus says, you will perish if you don't receive God. You can do miracles is so much. He said the person will go to hell with all his miracles if he's not found in this place. If you don't know who God is, then that person will perish. That the Bible is God, not maybe the genuine God, the only true God. And Jesus, whom God sent to recover our soul, to deliver us from all iniquities, so that we can serve the living, present, constant God, the irreprovable. He will remove all and he will remain. If you are to remain, enter this book. He said by Prophet Zechariah, where are your fathers that went to Babylon? They are dead. Even my servants, the prophet, did they live forever for the world? The infallible Jesus. The book I gave to you, is he not still talking? He is not an idol. Idols don't talk. But the Bible is talking. When you open it, he will be speaking to you. He said, I am the Alpha and Omega. If you don't believe that, who you, which Alpha and Omega are you looking for? From where? Have you heard a lie in the Bible? None at all. The Bible says, I am the Alpha and Omega. You have to believe first. Then when you seek, you will find that he's the Alpha and Omega. He will give you his spirit. You also will be saying he is Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end of all things, he is that Lord that is to come. The word of God will be sounding in you. We are going to pray unto him. J.B. said, whom we study is the Sunday school, what is study? J.B. said, the Spirit of God has spoken by me. The Word of God was in my mouth. Let this Word of God be in your mouth. That's what qualified David. Let the Word of God be in you and the Spirit of the Word of God talking inside you. He is God. And this God must enter you. You must receive the Spirit of the Holy Bible. Cry out. Say that is how you enter. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Almighty Savior, we are waiting on you, and then our waiting is that your spirit will come upon us. As David was waiting, he was waiting in the forest. You found him. Oh God, you will find us wherever we are. Anybody waiting on the spirit of God, the spirit of God will locate that person. He will enter him, and God will be talking, preaching the word. Amen. What a beautiful yes, session. Beautiful. Thank you, Pastor Ben. Thank you. Waiting on the Lord. Hallelujah. He will renew our strength in this ministry. Our strength. We say we shall grow from strength to strength. Our confidence in Him will increase from level to level in Jesus' name. Amen. I just must live by faith.